Dum diddly dum diddly dum dee dee Diddly dum da dee do da Hey, how's it going? And welcome to part one of my top tips for a great start to Skyrim. As we know, Skyrim is a huge game where you can roam wherever you want and choose any playstyle you like. But whatever way you play, there are plenty of things you can do to give your character the best possible start. And here is a list of eight things I believe will give any style of character, whether a mage, thief or warrior, the best start to the game, and especially for new players. But even seasoned players may see things here they like the look of. I'm only going to be giving a very brief outline of any quests or anything you've got to do, etc. But I'll leave links to any full guides I've done on anything mentioned here, plus any others I think could be useful. So go check them out if you want, and they'll be in the description box below this video. And if you have any tips for starting the game, please drop them in the comment section below. So that being said, let's just crack on. Okay, so first things first, as you travel around Skyrim, you will come across standing stones all across the land. In fact, there's a total of 13 in all. Activating one of these stones will grant specific bonuses. However, you can only have one stone active at a time. And do beware, some will incur penalties as well. So make sure you weigh up the benefits to the cost carefully. However, this doesn't apply to stones I'll be mentioning in this video. So the chances are, the first stones you will come across are the three stones near Riverwood and these are known as the Guardian Stones and consist of the Thief Stone, the Mage Stone and the Warrior Stone. The Thief Stone improves stealth associated skills by 20% faster and the Thief skills are Archery, Alchemy, Light Armour, Lock Picking, Pickpocketing, Sneak and sp Speech. Though despite archery falling under the warrior skill set, it's still counted as a stealth skill in this instance. It is unknown if this is actually intentional or it's a, a bug. The mage stone improves magic associated skills by 20% faster, oddly enough, and the mage skills are alteration, conjuration, destruction, enchanting, illusion, restoration. And the warrior stone improves combat associated skills 20% faster, and the warrior skills are block, heavy armor, one-handed, smithing, and two-handed. Now you can interchange these perks by simply fast traveling back to the guardian stones and activating a new stone. So for example, if you're a mage and you want to level up alchemy, activate the thief stone. Or if you want to level up smithing, then go back to the guardian stones and activate the warrior stones. Don't forget to change back to your chosen stone once you finish, which is what I always tend to forget. All these stones stack with the rested, well rested, and if you're married, the lover's comfort bonuses. So this brings me to a couple of stones that may suit you best, all can be used as and when required. And they are firstly the lover stone, which is found east of Markarth, north of Kolskega Mine. Now this stone gives you 15% more XP in all skills right across the board, which saves you constantly fast traveling back and forth to activate different skills. And if you're like me, you don't have to worry about forgetting to swap your stones back, which I do all the time. However, it is worth bearing in mind that though it does stack with the rested and well rested bonuses, it won't stack with the lover's comfort bonus, which is simply just a temporary version of this stone's perk. And finally, for the purposes of this video, would be the Steed Stone, which is located northwest of Solitude and is directly north of the statue of Meridia. Now, this stone is kind of more utilitarian in its function and it gives you plus 100 carry weight, no movement penalty from armor, and all equipped armor is weightless, which is particularly good, obviously, for heavy armor users. Now, making money at the beginning of the game can be very important, so the ability to carry more and the weight of your armor set to zero is invaluable. Plus, having no movement penalty makes this stone really useful at the beginning of a playthrough, as you collect all your ingredients for alchemy and valuable looted items. Though, the trade-off is you'll lose the leveling advantage of the Guardian Stones. But as I said, you can reset the stone to suit your situation. So one of the first things you should do is get a safe place to sleep and even more importantly store all your ingredients and loot you pick up on your travels. And there are plenty of options such as joining the Companions or the Dark Brotherhood but I found the best for me is the College of Winterhold which is located in the northern section of um, Winterhold Hold in northern Skyrim. 
Now, if you've already been to Winterhold, then you can fast travel. If not, get a carriage or you can walk, but I strongly recommend you do a hard save before you travel. Now, before we start, I just have to mention, if you find anything that enhances your magic levels, such as Novice Hood um, adds plus 40 magicka and found in a body one of the cages as you escape from Helgen, then keep it, don't sell it. Okay, so join up, head towards the college, and you'll meet the gatekeeper, Frauda, who will wish to see a demonstration of your magical powers. And these spells include Firebolt, Fear, Fury, Mage Light, Healing Hands, Conjure Flame, Astronaut, Conjure Familiar, and Fireball. A few of the spells need more than the starting 100 magicka, so hence the point of picking up anything that enhances your magicka. Now, if the spell she requests has not yet been learned, she offers to sell it to you for a bargain 30 gold. Now, I mentioned the save before you travel, as you can reload and approach her till you get the spell you want. Now, the most useful, in my opinion, uh, especially at an early start, are Fear, Fury, Conjure, Flame Atronach and Fireball. So, see if you can get one of them. Anyway, once that's done, she'll send you to see Mirabal Irving, who will give you a tour of the college and show you to your room. The room gives you plenty of safe storage, a load of respawnable ingredients and soul gems, plus access to an alchemy laboratory and an arcane enchanter, and an opportunity to steal a crap ton more from your fellow students and teachers. But beware if you're caught, they will send hired thugs after you and even expel you from the college. So always, always make sure you're safe before you go on robbing spree. Now, as I mentioned before, you get access to an alchemy laboratory and an arcane enchanter, both of which will give you plenty of respawnable ingredients and soul gems. And also having your room here is particularly useful when power leveling, enchanting and any other magic skill. And I'll leave a link uh, below to a video that goes into this in much, much greater detail. And it's really worth checking that video out. Okay, as a new character, you are very, very weak. So weak, even muck cramps can take you out. So having a bit of backup is essential, whether to take on enemies or tank few. So the one thing I really, really, really recommend for any starter character is get into the Astronaut Forge to make some Astronaut staff. A link to the full walkthrough is in the description plus a link to the wiki giving you all the info you need on the Atronax. Anyway, the forge is located in the midden of uh, an underground facility beneath the College of Winterhold, so obviously you have to join the college. Now, you can create tones for these Atronax uh, here, but you're at low level and your magicka could be an issue, plus the range you can deploy an Atronax with a staff is far, far, far greater than the cast spell. So at this level, a staff is more suitable. You'll need to collect by some ingredients and they'll be shown in the walkthrough. Now you can make three staffs, a staff of Flame Atronach, Frost Atronach and Storm Atronach. And these little beauties are so effective and can be used for close support or help you fight or tank whilst you run or they can de be deployed in the middle of your enemies while they're still at a distance. And I have to say, if you only want to get one thing on this list, then these staffs, or at least one of them, would be it. And if you only want one staff, then I'd recommend the Storm Atronach, as he's the middle ground on strength and maneuverability, plus few enemies have any resistance to shock damage. But yeah, I can't recommend enough on getting one of these staffs, or preferably all three. Now, next up is something I do every playthrough, and that's joining the Thieves Guild. Not just because it's a great storyline, but the rewards you get just for joining. And like the college, you don't have to continue with the storyline if you don't want to. Just leave it or return to it later when you're ready. Uh, a link to Thieves Caches are in the description below, so check it out. Now, to join the Thieves Guild, you have to travel to Riften, where you'll meet Brynjolf, who can be found at the Market Stalls during the day or the Bee and Barb Tavern during the night. Brynjolf will approach you and question your wealth before inviting you to help him with a little plot. This begins the first quest, A Chance Arrangement, where you are to steal a ring from Medici. Now, after stealing the ring, sneak up to Branche and position yourself behind the crates he's sitting on, pickpocket him and place the ring in his inventory. If you wish to spare Branche, you can um, actually drop the ring instead and tell Brynjolf you lost it. He won't be happy but you will be able to proceed to the next quest nonetheless. Uh, but the one bright spot about this is you can go and see Branche in jail and laugh at him. 
Anyway, after this is done, Brynjolf will ask you to meet him in the Red Flagon, which is initially accessed through the Ratway. And there, he will then go on and ask if you're up to handling a few deadbeats for him. They owe the Thieves Guild money. And the three you have to lean on are Kareva, Bursi Honeyhand and Hyolga. And once that's done, Brynjolf will take you to see Mercer, who will allow you into the Guild. And this is what you get for doing this. You get a fence to take all your stolen goods, a decent set of light armour with fortified lockpicking pickpockets and carrying capacity enchantments, and more in, importantly, three thieves cachets. Now, three are found in all the major cities and are open to you at the end of the Skill storyline, but the three caches in Riften and one in Raven Rock are available as soon as you join the Thieves Guild and they hold random arrows, gems, lockpicks and enchanted daggers. Now these are all levelled so the higher you are the better the loot. Uh, note these are all stolen so you'll have to send them, sell them to a fence and they respawn every 10 days but you have to leave that city for 10 in-game days. If you come back in before the 10 days up the counter will be reset to zero. Um, if you're after a particular enchantment, you can make a save before you enter the city and reload till you get what you want. But I so strongly recommend you do this part of the quest at least. These three uh, barrels are, or caches, are invaluable. Next up, while we're still in Riften, is to do the Book of Love quest. And to begin this quest, go to the Temple of Amara in Riften. Speak to Dinya Balu, I think that's how you pronounce it, and she will give you quests to find love for three couples, and that's Fastrid, Bassianus Axius, and Klimek, and then Calcimo and Feline, and finally Ruki and Fenrig. Once that's all done, return to Riften and speak with Dinya Balu to receive the Agent of Mara blessing, and this is a permanent plus 15% resist magic. Now this is a great boost, especially if you're playing as a Bresson with a 25% inherent magic resistance. So you'll be boosted up to a whopping 40% at a low level. Well worth it for such an easy and quick quest. Now, as I'm always mentioning, don't forget about alchemy, which is an often ignored and underutilized part of the game do try to use it to its full ability whatever character type you play and if you're new to the game or ignored alchemy up to now i've done a really detailed four series guide to alchemy uh, you might find worth watching however one of the issues is getting enough ingredients especially early on now if you're following this guide you've already been getting some fairly high level ingredients from the college by fair means or foul but by doing three super quick and simple quests for Arcadia in Arcadia's Cauldron at Whiterun, Angeline in Angelina's Aromatics at Solitude, Bethella in the Hag's Cure at Markarth and these will give you a certain amount of ingredients free of charge and these respawn every 48 hours I believe. But make sure you quick save before taking these ingredients as some of them are marked as stealing and it's ever so easy to pick them up by mistake and have hired thugs sent after you. But these quests are definitely worthwhile doing early on. Now, one of the main stumbling blocks for a new character in the game is making money, but with decent alchemy skills and looting as much as you can, you'll quickly have enough stuff to rapidly fill your coin purse. However, there aren't that many general merchants around and they probably won't have enough gold to buy all your stuff you're trying to offload. Other merchants are only allowed to buy and sell specific items. This would mean a whole lot of running around or fast travelling to get your gold. So I would strongly suggest you get the Merchant's Perk. This allows you to sell anything to any merchant, which is a massive, massive time saver. It also enables you to do power levelling in places like the College of Winterhold. Now, to get this perk, simply go to Windhelm and visit Revin Sardry at Sardry's Used Wares in Windhelm's Grey Quarter. He is one of the rare merchant trainers in the game. You'll have to do a quick side quest for him to unlock him as a trainer. 
but once that's done you can sell him stuff and pay for all your speech training i'll be linking videos in the description box with complete walkthroughs on how to get this perk and also power leveling at the college i mean they're older videos uh, but well worth checking out believe me And now we come to my final tip for a new start, and that's the transmute spell. Now this is a very rare spell, as far as I know, only found in two places, Anselvund and Halted Stream Camp. Now for the purpose of this video, we'll stick with Halted Stream Camp, which is easy to get to, being just northwest of the White Watch Tower near Whiterun, and far, far easier for a low level character. Now you're gonna meet a few bandits outside, and if you're at low level and I follow this guy, guide sorry you can just pop atronax into the camp to deal with those bandits once inside you'll find a few bandits plus a bandit chief uh, watch out for the traps some will easily kill you at low level anyway deal with them and the treasury spell is found on the table next to bed there's a couple of chests here plus a few other bits and bobs so obviously loot them so the way this spell works is it makes a silver ore into gold ore first and then iron ore to silver ore if there's no silver ore in your inventory so i suggest getting as much iron ore as you can get your hands on convert it into gold ore then smelt it into iron uh, sorry gold ingots to make gold jewelry pieces enchant them and sell them by doing this you'll be leveling up alteration smithing enchanting and and speech skills whilst making a profit um, FYI no matter what type of character I'm playing I always find it useful to get alteration up to level 70 to get a further magic resistance of 30% uh, plus spells like paralyze if you're going to use those kinds of spells anyway that's it that's my final tip Okay, so there you go, my top eight tips to get you started in Skyrim. And as I mentioned before, these are good for any build types and will launch you from zero to hero in no time flat. Now, of course, there are many other things you can do. So if anyone has any further advice, please leave it in the comments below. I'd love to see them. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. More importantly, you found it useful. See you later.